Behind every sonar ping, every radar sweep, every aircraft launch, and every reactor control signal is raw electrical power. And keeping that energy flowing flawlessly and without fail is the job of one of the most technically demanding roles in the Navy nuclear program, the nuclear electrician's mate. Hello everyone, my name is Justin Woodall. And I'm Caleb Stewart. We both served 10 years in the Navy's submarine force as nuclear electrician's mates, operating, maintaining, and troubleshooting some of the most critical electrical systems aboard the Navy's most advanced warships. And now we're building the Navy Nuke Network, a platform designed to educate, empower, and connect Navy nukes across every phase of their journey, while also helping employers understand exactly who we are what we've done, and why hiring a Navy nuke is a game-changing move for any technical team. In this video, we're going to walk through each key milestone that defines the journey of a Navy nuclear electrician's mate. From the day they join the Navy to the moment they become fully qualified as a senior nuclear electrician, trusted with leading teams and managing the systems that keep the fleet alive. This one's personal for us because we lived it. Let's get into it. At the center of every nuclear-powered ship is the reactor. And while all three nuclear ratings support the reactor's operations in different ways, Electrician's Mates Nuclear, or EMNs, are responsible for distributing and maintaining the electrical power that keeps the ship alive, from propulsion systems to communication equipment and everything in between. Before they ever touch a reactor or operate a system, they have to earn their spot in the Navy's nuclear power training pipeline, a process that's widely regarded as one of the most technically demanding in the world. The selection starts before they even leave for boot camp. To even be considered for the program, candidates need exceptionally high ASVAB scores, especially in math and science along with a clean moral and legal record and the ability to obtain a secret security clearance. Once selected, they are sent to boot camp as an E3. And while boot camp itself is a challenge, it's really just the beginning. Within those eight weeks, they're officially assigned to their job, electricians mate nuclear, and receives orders to begin the nuclear training pipeline. From that point forward, the Navy invests the next 24 months and hundreds of thousands of dollars into turning them into one of the most capable technical operators in the military. The standards are brutally high, the curriculum is dense, and the attrition rate is real. This isn't just military training, it's an elite engineering pipeline. Employers take note. Before that EMN candidate ever sat in front of you for an interview, they already proved that they could handle an immense academic pressure, meet unforgiving standards, and succeed in one of the most high-stakes learning environments in the world. The first two phases of technical training are A School and Power School, both located in Goose Creek, South Carolina, at Naval Nuclear Power Training Command, just outside of Charleston. A School focuses on building core electrical fundamentals specific to their role as nuclear electrician's mates. Here, they dive into subjects like mathematics, basic electricity, digital microprocessors, electrical equipment, and electronics fundamentals, all geared toward understanding how electrical theory applies to the systems they'll eventually operate and maintain. This is also where they begin learning about electrical safety, circuit analysis, equipment construction, and basic motor theory. Graduating from A school comes with a promotion to E4. From there, students roll directly into power school. This is where the academic intensity spikes. Power school condenses what's essentially most of an engineering degree's worth of content into six months of relentless instruction. Students cover nuclear physics, thermodynamics, reactor principles, fluid flow, material science, chemistry, radiological fundamentals, and advanced mechanical and electrical theory. And for electricians specifically, that last subject becomes a focal point, deep diving into how electrical power is generated, distributed, and regulated in nuclear environments. Topics include detailed analysis of power distribution networks, electrical grid load sharing, load setup sequencing, and intricate system diagrams with fault diagnosis and calculation work. They're expected not just to memorize, but to explain and apply and troubleshoot this material under exam conditions. Passing power school means they've made it through multiple high stakes exams, including the A school comprehensive final and power school comprehensive final and are now ready to apply all of this theory into a real nuclear plant. We've covered A school and power school in much greater depth in separate videos, and those are available for a deeper dive. The next stage of training is called a nuclear prototype. 
It's where everything comes together. It's the final stage of the Navy's nuclear training pipeline and the first time students operate a live reactor. Known officially as Nuclear Power Training Unit, or NPTU, Prototype is located at one of two sites, Goose Creek, South Carolina, or Boston Spa, New York. Training is divided into two phases. The first seven weeks are classroom-based, where students refresh theory and learn the specific layout and operation of the reactor plant they'll be training on. After that, they'll transition into the on-crew phase, a 17-week grind of real-world operation, rotating shift work, and qualification checkouts. Every student is assigned to one of five training crews, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, or Echo. 12-hour shift cycles rotate between days, swings, and mids, week by week. It's mentally and physically draining by design, meant to replicate the demands of operating a real plant at sea. Once on crew, the expectations ratchet up fast. Each student is issued a qualification card, or qual card, that outlines every system, watch station, and evolution they must understand. For electrician's mates, this means learning how to operate and maintain the full electrical distribution system, including turbine generators, switchboards, motor controllers, transformers, load centers, emergency buses, the works. A qualification card contains hundreds of oral exams called checkouts, which are conducted with qualified personnel, often instructors or senior operators, who quiz them on system diagrams, component functions, casualty responses, and procedural steps. These aren't checkbox tasks. They're expected to explain, troubleshoot, and demonstrate deep knowledge. And every checkout builds towards qualifying progressively more advanced watch stations. Throughout the entire process, they also start actual watch, monitoring equipment, responding to drills, performing lineups, and integrating with the real watch team under the supervision of experienced instructors. To complete prototype, students must pass a comprehensive final written exam that covers everything they've learned from the first day of A school up to that point. Then comes the oral board, a high pressure panel where senior enlisted and officer staff members grill them on systems, procedures, and casualty responses. They don't pass unless they prove they're ready to carry the weight of a reactor plant underway. At the end of prototype, at the two-year mark in a sailor's career, students become eligible to re-enlist through the Navy's STAR re-enlistment program. For Navy nukes, that re-enlistment comes with a promotion to E5 and a bonus now exceeding $100,000. The program has changed significantly in the recent years and we'll be covering those details in a future video. And for those looking for a deeper breakdown of what prototype is really like from the qual card grind to life on rotating 12-hour shifts, a full prototype video is coming soon. Those who pass are no longer students. They're qualified nuclear watchstanders trusted to operate and maintain the reactor plants aboard submarines and aircraft carriers. Once they complete prototype, they receive orders to their first operational command, either a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier or a submarine. Everything they've learned up to this point was designed to prepare them for this moment. Now, they're responsible for maintaining and operating the systems that keep a warship and its nuclear reactor running safely and effectively anywhere in the world. From the first day they step aboard, the training and qualification process continues at full speed. As electrician's mates, they permanently are assigned to their ship or boat's engineering department or reactor department in the case of aircraft carriers, and specifically to the electrical division. Upon check-in, they're issued a stack of qualification cards and expected to begin working on all of them at once. There's no easing into it. These qualifications happen in parallel. They begin radiological qualifications like radiological worker, contamination worker, and control point area watch, and primary valve operator. At the same time, they're tackling maintenance qualifications such as maintenance person and craftsman both of which are required to perform and verify nuclear maintenance on critical systems. And while learning those, they're also advancing through their rate-specific qualifications, preparing for advanced electrical watch stations. For example, on a ballistic missile submarine, an electrician's mate might qualify auxiliary electrician aft, then throttleman, and eventually electrical operator and shutdown electrical operator. Those are just a few of the steps required before reaching their senior enlisted qualification. On other platforms, the names and layout may vary. Fast attacks and aircraft carriers follow different structures, but the intensity and expectations remain the same. No matter the assignment, they manage qualification progress across every domain at the same time while also standing watch, maintaining equipment and integrating into the crew. 
Their senior in rate qualification as an electrician's maid is the final benchmark of their first sea tour. They are given a maximum of 18 months to earn it, and it's mandatory for all EMNs. On submarines, this qualification is known as a shutdown reactor operator, the individual responsible for the safe oversight of the reactor in its shutdown condition. On aircraft carriers, the equivalent role is load dispatcher, the person coordinating and managing the entire plant's electrical distribution system. Both roles require a deep understanding of their plant's electrical systems, operating conditions, casualty response procedures, and the level of leadership that goes beyond technical skill. These positions are often pre requisites for future supervisory roles. Throughout this journey, they're not just running equipment. They're responsible for its entire life cycle. Navy nuclear electricians install, operate, inspect, test, repair, and troubleshoot both high and low voltage equipment. They manage power generation systems, switchboards, transformers, motor controllers, voltage regulators, lighting systems, emergency power supplies, and more. These systems are often complex, interdependent, and mission critical. Precision isn't optional, it's expected. They're also responsible for planning, scheduling, and tracking maintenance using onboard systems that mirror the SCADA style platforms used in modern industry. They coordinate with logistics teams, order and manage parts, and work with civilian contractors to execute large-scale overhauls while in port. As they gain experience, they begin leading maintenance teams, ensuring procedural compliance, overseeing safety briefs, and enforcing standards like lockout-tagout, zero energy checks, and operational walkdowns. Every action they take is documented, reviewed, and held to the highest standard because lives, missions, and national security depend on it. Electricians maids operate under pressure, solve complex problems, and lead with precision. The level of responsibility placed on junior personnel in this community is unlike anything found elsewhere. But what truly sets them apart is the intensity of their work environment. Navy nukes put in more hours per day, more days per year, than almost any civilian role. Long deployments, rotating shift work, high operational tempos, it all adds up. A six to eight year Navy career often equates to 10 to 14 years of civilian experience in terms of time on tools, leadership exposure, and technical growth. They've stood watch in the control room of a nuclear reactor, responded to casualty scenarios in real time, and maintain accountability for some of the world's most complex and unforgiving equipment. They've led teams, enforced safety protocols, managed risk, tracked maintenance schedules, and delivered performance under pressure, all before most people finish their second job. So, if you see nuclear electrician's mate on a resume, understand this. You're looking at someone who's already proven themselves in one of the highest stakes technical arenas in the world, and they're just getting started. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.